All right, so this interview is for Arlo Andretti uh, for the Family 420 affiliate um, program of the Human Solution in Illinois. And the purpose of this is to let the folks in Illinois who the Human Solution is and um, what we're about, what we're for, and how you can participate in our mission to educate and support cannabis patients, providers, POWs, and the community at large. Big job to do. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, the key to this whole thing is education. Support's easy. Uh, anybody can support anybody. You can support with court support. You can support with money. You can support with legal um, help. You can support with food. All sorts of ways to support. Um, you know, our website, thehumansolution.org, uh, has all kinds of ways that you can help with that. There's also a lot of our patient stories um, and we always encourage people to share their story with us so that others can learn from it. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk about education because that's our primary focus. That's the key to us solving this problem overall. So a little brief bit of history um, that if you read you know, Jack Harris' book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, it's got a really good comprehensive history of prohibition and um, of life before prohibition and how cannabis used to be used in our pharmacopoeia and physicians used to recommend it as medicine, not just as a you know, herbal treatment, but it was actually medicine before it got rescheduled. Um, 1937, we had some characters that came in that were uh, paper and chemical uh, pioneers and, and um, they didn't like the fact that hemp was such a competitive product that you know could basically outperform their products and so they said on a mission of propaganda and misinformation to sway public's perception against cannabis and so they pulled out some racism uh, because a lot of the immigrants from Mexico used cannabis and they preyed upon, um, you know, racism with the, with the blacks and jazz music and reefer madness and ultimately we had, you know, Harry Anslinger and all of these characters that came into play and in a very short period of time enough of America was against cannabis um, that we allowed for prohibition to occur. And when I say we allowed for it to happen, I mean we didn't stop it. Um, you know, our politicians are, are our own arms. And when a politician does something that we don't like and we allow them to remain in office, it's just as bad as us letting them do it. And so one of the things that we try to educate people is to participate in the political process. Um, you know, there's so many ways people can participate. The first thing I always say is to vote. Register to vote. And research your candidates. Research candidates not only to remove from office, because that's the easy part. Most candidates, if you look at um, anything from city council all the way to judges and congress people, their political history, their record is easy to find. So do some research. Um, the hardest thing to do is to find somebody to vote for. So I believe that in our mission to educate, I think one of our one of our most important messages is we need to raise up leaders. We need to raise up electable leaders. We need to raise up people uh, that don't have a negative history that can be brought out um, in the vetting process and kind of you know make it impossible to be elected. We need to have people that are eloquent, um, that are you know, well-spoken enough and pretty enough to be elected, which is unfortunate, but it's the truth. People will elect somebody, you know, for the shallowest of reasons. So we need to raise up people that are electable and people that actually have common sense, people that actually not only support our views, but will actually listen to the people. And, you know, that's paramount. It doesn't matter what our view is. If it's the view that the populace uh, supports, that's what that elected official needs to represent. There aren't, not in every place in America, um, would a true good politician 
support cannabis because there's plenty of pockets of people that don't because they're not educated. Um, the next thing is medical cannabis is got so much good information to be shared with people. Uh, there's great science that's being uh, done right now. Uh, major universities are conducting studies. Um, the endocannabinoid si system in the human body is being explored and understood and tested and we're just unlocking this amazing um, miracle drug that seems to I, I, last night I was talking about it as a smart drug. It actually seems to know where to go. The body system is set up in such a way that these receptors call out where it's needed. And so you can take a, a medicine into your body, whether it's vaporizing it or smoking it or ingesting it with a, um, an edible or a tincture. Um, it doesn't matter how you take it in. It gets into your body and your body will tell it where to go and to deliver its relief. There's very few even herbal treatments that are like that. So, you know, this is, this is something that as the science um, becomes more documented and we get more and more studies that come out, these are the things that we need to share with people. Uh, we don't have to assume that because somebody's ignorant that they're stupid. There's a lot of very smart, even brilliant people that don't understand cannabis. They don't know because they've not been shown it. And if you can communicate to them, this is um, something I learned from Patch Adams. And he said, we have to find the language to reach everybody so that they will see how important it is to fix these injustices in the world. And this is a true injustice that there's this plant that's no different than any of these plants you see, except for it possesses within itself amazing chemical properties that can heal people that are sick in so many different ways. And if we can find the language to reach the people that oppose this plant to be used to help so many people, then we can solve this problem once and for all. And some people is straight facts, straight science. So we need to get that science. We need that data so we can show those people in particular. We need, um, you know, the documented stories. We need the anecdotal evidence of the people coming forward. Uh, thousands and thousands of, of people who previously to crushing illnesses were against cannabis. But then when their life changed to the point where a crushing illness that was going to kill them and presented them with a, the rest of their life of excruciating pain and suffering, opened their mind up just enough to say, well, maybe that will work. Um, we get those stories from those people who were not recreational users, uh, that people that never used it before until they were in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then they tried it and found relief. Those stories need to reach out to the people that are against us. Most of our opponents, remember, most of our opponents are misinformed or not informed at all. And so education here is paramount. So this is a big part. I could go on and on forever, so I'm going to try to hit bullet points and talk about it a little bit. But education is a critical part of the human solution and what we do.